This is a Dripping and Black podcast retro replay, a previously released episode from our archive. New episodes drop early 2024. Stay tuned for more stories of Black excellence. Welcome to the Dripping in Black podcast, where we celebrate Black excellence throughout the Black diaspora. Here's your host, David V. Lewis. What's up, good people all across the world? It's the Dripping in Black podcast. I am your host, David V. Lewis. And per usual, we have another fantastic guest who represents Black excellence. Today's guest is Alicia Bradford. Alicia, say hello to the world. Hello, world. Hello, David. (laughs) All right. So we got a pretty good conversation lined up, but I always like to introduce the guests to our audience. So we begin by asking uh, who you are. So who is Alicia Bradford? Well, Alicia Bradford is a young black girl, a black woman, uh, grew up on the Northeast side, you know, Cranswood, Coney Gardens, near Persian, all of that. Um, two wonderful parents, um, younger brother, oldest of two, um, and just went to Detroit Public High Schools and, you know, educated there, graduated from Wayne State and just moved around, did some things, life experiences and been a public servant for over 30 plus years um, for the city of Detroit and Wayne County. Um, but um, adventurous, um, spirited, uh, bossy or, or assertive, <laughs> if we can say. Um, so that's a, a little bit about Alicia Bradford, Alicia Mentor, a.k.a. Alicia Bradford. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. And of course, you and I, we go way back and, and I've seen all of that, but you've always been fun and nice towards me. So I, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> we have quite a history, right? Um, your mother and my mother were the best of friends or still are the best of friends. And uh, that's how we come to know each other. Um, we're like cousins, that's right? right. Um, that's right. And then you have a brother who uh, way back when I was rapping, you know, this, this is going to tell on me or tell on both of us actually, but I was rapping. I had a beatbox and a DJ. <laughs> we know <laughs> what DJ you was her little brother, uh, Arthur Mentor. Uh-huh. Uh, DJ name was Artie Leet. <clears throat> Shout Artie out to Leet. Artie Leet. <laughs> and my pops and your pops were pretty close friends as well. So, you know, we're, we're really like family. So I just want to put that out there to our dripping and black audience. But let's get into. That's right. I always refer to you as cousin. Yeah. That's I refer yeah. to. Yeah. When cousin, I see so you as cuz. Right, it's cuz back that's back in right. the day it was BB and Man Man. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You know, but uh we we growing up and I see you say what's up, cuz, right? Right. Yeah. So let's talk about um your realm of excellence, one of your realms of excellence, and that is in uh the the director of park services. Is it park services? Or am I adding parks more? and recreation? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's fine. Parks and recreation, same thing, park services. Okay. Yeah. For Wayne State, right? I mean, Wayne, Wayne County. Wayne County, my bad. My bad. That's all right. All right. So talk about um, how do you, how did you get to that position? So, I mean, just go long story short. So, of course, you know, I was um, formerly city director for City of Detroit, Parks and Recreation Director for City of Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, retired from there in 2016. Um, But of course, looking back, you know, like I'm too young to sit at home, um, needed health care. So it was like, you better find another (laughs) job quick. And so (laughs) the opportunity was available for a Wayne County Parks Director. um, And I interviewed out a number of 10 candidates. Um, And it was a process over about three to four months. And actually, I was on vacation coming back from Vegas and turned my phone back on and saw a voicemail and a a text saying, contact uh, Wayne County HR so we can make this offer to you. And I was like, Mm -hmm. thank thank you, Lord, you know what I needed. And so took that assignment on. So I've been at Wayne County Parks since 2016, just managing all of the parks under Wayne County 
um, as well managing uh, the park millage for the 43 communities that make up Wayne County. So I interact with a number of parks and recreation departments across the county and about their park projects. Okay, so when you yeah. said bossy as a description, it's, it's actually, <laughs> there's a reason for that as well. It's a, it's a boss to you, right? It's a boss to me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> boss to me and a, and a talker to me, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, as a parks director, what's what's a day like? What's what's like the day in the life of a parks director? So it's pretty it's pretty chill, um, but there are some interesting days as well because I mean it just comes at you, and people would think that it's like slow moving. It's not really eventful, but it is. You know, besides you know programming for residents, beside working on capital infrastructure, you know, working with our team, team development is just um, on a daily basis. I'm coming in, you know, doing a lot of process pieces as being the administrator. So budgets, you know, as I said, the park millage, um, dealing with any issues that may come up operationally. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it can run the gamut from, you know, especially with this COVID, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to make modifications to specific areas in the dog park because people don't want to social distance. And so I, I do something and they send me a letter Please put our please put our benches back. We promise, you know, we're social distance. And I'm like, if you don't, I'm gonna take it back out. So it just it just it runs the gamut on a daily basis. But my team work with a good team, and it just again depends on the day. But it's not a dull moment, you know, at Wayne County. It's not a dull moment when I was at the city as well. Yeah. But it's, it's it's pretty cool. I, I can I can say I really enjoy it. Yeah. So you know, I'm laughing aside because you said you move those park benches, but you don't literally move them. You just make a phone call and they get moved. <laughs> yeah, I do that, but I got I got a good team. But I do help them too. So I do I do chip in and help when 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 time calls. For, okay. You know, I just well, usually if, make the call and they and then they make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's where I'm trying to get. Just make a phone call and make stuff happen. I, I'm not there yet, because. Uh, Okay, sorry, I, I didn't mean to take you too fast. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about um, city of Detroit, right? So was that the same position just at the city level or was there some nuanced differences there? So pretty much the same position um, at um, with the city, but the city had more um, detail, a little bit more intricate than Wayne County. Um, at Wayne mm -hmm. County, I'm just dealing with parks infrastructure. I have um, golf courses, um, a marina, um, and a water park. So the Chandler Park Water Park, you know, in Chandler Park is actually Wayne County's. Um, so that's what I have Wayne County, but with the city, it ran a gamut. I had parks, I had recreation centers, I had um, Belle Isle was one of the parks under recreation. I had Shane Park, Hart Plaza, the wow. cem cemeteries, marinas, golf courses. So all of that was, and I'm probably forgetting something too, but all of that was city of Detroit. So it was a larger swath of responsibility um, and a larger, so that, those are some dynamic stories on that. And if you want to hear some, inter what a day was like over there, that's interesting. <laughs> but that, that had just a little bit more, um, I won't say, I'll just say a little more depth, even though Wayne County Parks is fulfilling just the same, but it was just a, just a little bit more intricacy to the city of Detroit Parks Department. Yeah. But it was, okay. it was, yeah, it was well, good, good, you, good learning you, ground, good, good, good <laughs> detail for that. Yeah, you can definitely uh, be ready to uh, share one of those stories, but I got a, a couple of questions I wanted to ask. So um, did you set out to get that position uh, I'm curious, how did you, how did you get into this field? So, no, I didn't set out to get that position. Um, when I was, you know, going to school, college, you know, my whole thing is I wanted to go to law school and be an attorney, but I was still mm -hmm. working, come, you know, working for the city and going to school. And so I just was, you know, meant, meeting um, different people, different people took me under their wing. And actually I was in human resources. And mm -hmm. the position came up in Belle Isle to be the Belle Isle assistant. And the director for recreation at that time reached out to me and asked me to interview. And I interviewed, I got the job. And so I was the first um, black woman to run Belle Isle, which is the fifth largest urban park in the United States. 
um, thanks wow. to somebody calling me to encourage me to interview. And then from there, just matriculated up um, and then actually was appointed because um, directors are by the mayors. So was appointed really to the deputy director position and people can say what they want, but Kwame Kilpatrick, Kwame Malik mm -hmm. Kilpatrick is going to be my boy until the end. And so okay. <laughs> he, he, he appointed me um, as the um, deputy director. And then again, subsequent mayors appointed me as their director. So that's how I really got into the administrative portion of recreation. Somebody that saw something in me reached out to me and said, hey, I want you to look at this opportunity and apply and, and interview and then I was successful from, and then it moved up from there. Wow. That's, that's pretty big of Kwame to do considering that he went to cast and you went to Renaissance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, you know, cause we were some dueling people on that end. We were some dueling people, but I appreciate him looking past that rivalry and um, recognizing um, that I could help, you know, at that point in time, just lead that department. Yeah. So first black woman over Belle Isle. So it, it has to be a plethora of black women that were uh, parks director for uh, Wayne County. You you couldn't be the first. <laughs> no, not for Wayne County. And actually my predecessor, and we were both counterparts, who's now my boss now, my uh, predecessor, Beverly Watts, was the first okay. black woman uh, parks director for Wayne County. Okay. Yes, yeah, she was. Uh huh. Yeah. So she, would, she trailblazed would, that over there. Would that make you the second? I am the second. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's pretty good. So I guess my question is in your field, do you see a, a lot of women kind of holding these positions or um, are you more of a, a rarity and Ms. Watts more of a rarity? I would say initially, probably a, f a few years or so ago, we were probably a rarity. I'm seeing more women um, on my national level and actually part of, I was president of our ethnic minority society for our national level. Um, so where we fostered trying to recognize a lot of you know, African-American women in leadership position in recreation. So now it's starting to kind of tilt a little bit, but it's still predominantly white males, white women, mm -hmm. and then black males and then black women. Um, but we're starting to see again, those kind of transition into leadership positions in this field and not only in recreation, but other fields, you know, across the world. Yeah. Just a shout out to our VP, you know, just shattering that ceiling with that. Indeed. Indeed. Yep. And so in the pre-show, we talked a little bit about uh, women going big in areas of their career. Talk a little bit about that thought process uh, for you. What does that mean for you? So I think probably in my 30 plus years of working in public service and just the, my, the, the wonderful dynamic women I've met that are close friends or associates or that I've done business with. Um, I think a lot of times um, we as women, and I don't really think it's just really um, kind of myopic to African-American women. Mm -hmm. I just think women in, in general, okay. um, that we tend to doubt ourselves um, with the skills and the knowledge that we have in order to be those executives, in order to be those leaders, in order to um, run, our, uh, run our businesses, initiate programs, whatever the case may be, um, because we don't think, you know, we just don't, we just don't have it. And, you know, through just training and experience and just talking to a lot of folks, I've just, you know, learned that you got to go for it. You got to go for it. You have the tools, you have everything in you to make it happen. And if you don't, a lot of, you know, we're smart enough to ask the right questions or get the right people around us so we can be successful. You know, not being threatened if somebody has another area of expertise mm -hmm. that we don't have, learn from that person. And that person, if they're working for you, they're gonna make you excel anyway. And I think we tend to put a pause, you know, we tend to get in the self doubt I've done that myself, mm -hmm. um, just thinking of past mistakes or thinking of just um, being uh, focused in one particular area, having a specialty in one particular area that it can't transfer into a larger picture and talk ourselves. I've talked myself out of 
applying for positions or doing certain things mm. because of it. And I'm just, you know, kind of just boldly professing now that I'm going big, you know, mm. big um, that I'm going to stretch outside of thinking I can't. And then big, my, my church has a theme going on, going big means believing in God. So I'm going to keep doing that, going big, believing in God. So anything that I want in obedience, it's going to manifest, it's going to happen yeah. and just cut out that self-doubt. And, you know, that, um, you know, just, just double, you know, just kind of just double thinking things, you know, you want to be thoughtful, but not just keep talking yourself out of a situation yeah. instead of talk yourself into a situation. Yeah. Yeah. If it's good. Yeah. Now, not no craziness, but if it's good. <laughs> yeah. affirming good things. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's great. That's a great conversation. Um, I think my thought was uh, around this concept of, of uh, challenges because you you start off in Detroit and you you know you go up to Wayne County you retired in between uh, was that a smooth sail from one position on up or did you have some challenges along the way? What were some challenges along the way and and, and, and like because I'm, I'm transparent because you know <laughs> your, your your audience that's listening they may learn something from me I've learned lessons it's all part of where we are yeah. in life and so it was a challenge you know when I retired from the city of Detroit and, that, and I mentioned appointees that you're appointed by the mayor. So it's depending, you're at the wheel. So it's depending yeah. on if he likes you, if she likes yeah. you or not. Um, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't get down to if you're you know, excellent in your job, it's just about sometimes personalities. Mm -hmm. So it's challenge there. And then, you know, it wasn't a challenge for me to go from there to transition over to Wayne County um, because it's again, a, a little more um, smaller organization um, as far as a, the, the parameters of responsibility. So that was not difficult. Okay. It's just learning the business and how to operate over at Wayne County. Um, but there's still challenges there, you know, anytime it's still, you know, level of politics. Um, it's still a level of um, people understanding and not understanding your business. It's still a, a, a level of, you know, competitiveness um, and uh, sometimes some fierce um, doggy dog uh, <laughs> type of scenarios, you know. Mm. And so, you know, you got to stay alive best as possible. But um, you know, it's not an easy walk, but I think um, I take it all in stride, the challenges, even the failures, you know, from those and just kind of taking the lessons and moving forward. Yeah. 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 So uh, as a young woman, you get into the game and now you're more seasoned in the game. Um, what could you tell that younger person? So if somebody is entering the game that you're in, at the age that you entered, what's some advice that you would give them? I would de definitely tell them, I think what I've learned is, you know, I think what I saw was just have, you know, have your plan, but understand your plan may not always work. You got to know the flexibility and you got to be able to recognize, don't keep, don't stay married to an idea or situation because that's all part of your plan. I think mm. you need to have a level of flexibility and know that it may need to go in another direction for you to get the fulfillment, both personally and professionally, um, and the success that you need. You know, like I said, if I stayed down my goal of going to law school and being an attorney and, you know, being a poli sci major, I, I, I would not have got to this level. Not saying that in that plan, it would not have been some success, yeah. but I think it's just designed on how. It's supposed to go the other thing is don't think you know everything yeah. you know because you have you know major education or some folks that may be in the area that you're entering in may not have aspired to get to certain levels that you have um kind of said don't look down on people because mm -hmm. that's where they are yeah. and don't come in like i didn't ask could i cuss so i'm not gonna cuss but don't come <laughs> in like the smart but like you know everything was going on i think really recognizing you know what you know they know what they know how can you work it together so you all got to win and whatever you do i think that's what i would tell them and the, and the other thing is make sure you save your money if you're making nice money make sure you save your money instead of you know taking your money and just blind, buying and you know travel enjoy the luxuries of life but make sure you do that invest mm -hmm. properly save your money that when you get seasoned like me you're, you're good you can mm -hmm. you can you can relax and you don't have to stress too much thank the lord but 
I would say that too. Start off early on as early as possible that you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great, great, great. So I got a couple of more things. Um, and, you know, my 50 year old mind is actually losing one of the things, but I know, I know. you personally are um, very spiritual. So I just want to give you the floor to kind of talk about your spirituality and your church and that kind of thing. So you mentioned it briefly, but anything you want to share about your, your church life? Thank you. Well, you know, in, in that Northeast neighborhood, you know, I've been a, a member of a church of our father for probably 40 plus years. And that's where I have my um, spiritual roots. Um, and, it, and it ebbed and flowed because I think when you're younger, you know, you're in church, your parents are there, you're doing things. And so I went through my moment probably in my 20s where I was kind of in and out, yeah. still always still always grounded in, in, in God, but not really yeah. going to church and being, and then I think later, late twenties, early thirties, just got back in it in service and in, in, in spirit as well. Um, and so, you know, just transcending, holding a number of positions there, but the serving, using my gifts, and that's one thing, the, using my God giving gifts, and I'm so thankful yeah. for that, because um, directing the choir and singing in the choir, um, I just love doing that. And then I think just being, being so tuned in spiritually to know that when you've, you've, I guess, plateaued at a certain place, and you want to have more, to mm -hmm. recognize that Sometimes you shouldn't have loyalty to the church and mm. die spiritually. Yeah. And so made a difficult decision after being at my church for over 40 plus years to move to another church because yeah. I just needed another boost, another level, another yeah. big in my spirituality yeah. for me. And so, yeah. you know, my new church, um, I love it just the same as I loved Church of Our Father. Church of Our Father will always be my home base. But I, I like where I'm growing and developing even to another level spiritually. If you don't, if you don't get the wisdom and if you don't go to the next level of anything, but definitely a spirituality in your walk with God, yeah. that, 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 that you, you're not, you're not doing nothing. <laughs> Let me just say, yeah. you're not doing nothing. And I'm not admonishing people that, cause you can believe who you, who you believe in, Allah, whatever the case yeah. may be, but whatever you do on your spiritual connection and make sure you're just right. Um, in developing your soul and knowing um, that what you're doing is good and what you what you're trying to strive for is to be good and to emulate goodness. Um, so yeah. it's it's really major to me and it helps me a lot. You mentioned them challenges and everything. It helps me in a lot a lot of areas. If I didn't have that, I'm telling you, if I didn't have that, I'm already that, crazy. That northeast side I'm might have showed I'm up. All, hey, <laughs> I'm moving my hands, but some people know me. They they know. I'll be like, um, don't get it twisted. I will yank you. <laughs> but you know, folks that know me on the east side be like, okay, play well with others, you know. But I'll be trying, I'll be trying to keep it together. And I ain't nothing but the Lord. I'm gonna give them all the credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So a few more things. My uh mm -hmm. next thing is so you talked about you've retired once. And now you're at Wayne County. What's next from a professional standpoint? <laughs> I'm glad you asked me that because because <laughs> because I'm I'm ever evolving, you know. And I love um, parks, and I've been in parks for 20 years and won some tremendous accolades and and appreciate not bragging, just 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 boasting on the goodness of God and just um, awards that I received on the national level and across. But my next aspiration really is to take all of this administrative skills, this knowledge I've learned through my different roles in the city of Wayne County, and is to become a city manager for okay. um, uh, either a township, village, whatever, locally, or I may have to uproot and move somewhere. But that's, that's okay. my next career move is to try to become a city manager. So starting off at an assistant or, you know, and then definitely just move up to that. So that's the next move. That's my next aspiration. Well, that's, that's wonderful. We're looking forward to that. And we can have our first city manager on Driven in Black podcast when that comes to fruition. Hey, now. Nah. All right. Hey, now. Nah, that sounds good. <laughs> All right. So our closeout question is, uh, have you ever been on the cover of a magazine? No. No, I haven't been on 
the cover of a magazine. I've been in some magazines, but not on the cover. Not that I can recall. No, no. In some, but not on. All oh right. my God. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the treats we, we give our guests is we put them on the cover of the Dripping in Black magazine. And uh, that's for their episode. All right. And so wow. you made the cover. Wow. Wow. I'm almost about to tear up because I'm for real. I am for real because I mean it's just wonderful of what you're doing with dripping in black and just you know just recognizing us you know and I mean us and in, in everyone and, and what we're doing as African Americans and people of color and I'm just really yeah. proud that you saw fit to to put me on your magazine oh I'm about to tear up <laughs> <laughs> yep so that is a parting gift that we will get out to you in the not too distant future for showing up for us and the pleasure is all mine. I think the audience will see why we had you on. Of course, you have the position of parks director, but it's that that spirit that I wanted to capture on camera that I think shined through in our uh, discussion. So we thank you for uh, coming out and gracing us. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. I say, I appreciate the opportunity and you staying at me <laughs> for it. I appreciate it. And again, yeah. proud of you and what you're doing. Yep. Well, I'll see you soon, cuz. All right. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> All right. Take care. Up next, the last drip. Hey, dripping in black. Thanks to our guest Alicia Bradford for sharing her story as well as those words of inspiration and encouragement to go big. She is truly good company to keep. And I know that this story is going to inspire many, many others. However, we have reached the final segment of our podcast called The Last Drip. The Last Drip is the last opportunity for us to squeeze in a bit more of Black excellence for you. In this final segment, we highlight a common thread between our guests in our vast and rich African-American history. Alicia's future aspiration of becoming a city manager in the not too distant future brings our focus of this episode's last trip to a person by the name of Shirley Clark Franklin. Born in Philadelphia in 1945, Franklin grew up in the city of brotherly love. In 1963, at the age of 18, she participated in the March on Washington where she was inspired by both Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King. After high school, Franklin attended the prestigious Howard University, graduating with a bachelor's degree in sociology in 1968. In 1969, she would earn her master's degree from the University of Pennsylvania. She would go on to teach political science at Talladega College in Alabama for about a decade. In 1978, Franklin's political career began to take shape. She was appointed by Atlanta Mayor Maynard Jackson as the city's Commissioner of Cultural Affairs. When Andrew Young succeeded Jackson as mayor, he appointed Franklin Chief Administrative Officer, AKA City Manager, making her the first woman in US history to be appointed to this post. One of her major accomplishments in this role was helping to bring the Olympic Games to Atlanta in 1992. In 2001, Franklin hit another milestone when she was elected Georgia's first African-American female mayor, as well as the first woman to be a mayor of a major Southern city. She served two terms as mayor from 2002 to 2010. From 2004 to 2019, Franklin received numerous honors and awards, including Governing Magazine's Public Official of the Year, one of Time Magazine's top five mayors in the country, the John F. Kennedy Profile and Courage Award, and the Diversity and Inclusion Awards Lifetime Achievement Award, to name a few. At the tender age of 75, Ms. Franklin is still going big, using her voice and influence to improve the lives of those around her. 
So in honor of our ongoing trailblazing work as a municipal leader, she is this episode's last drip. For more on Shirley Clark Franklin, check out nps.gov, the100-7.org, volkeralliance.org, and blackpass.org. My thanks to all of these websites for the knowledge. For pretty much everything that we are able to accomplish today, there is someone from our rich African-American history who blazed a trail for us. Do yourself a favor and learn about them. And remember, until next time, be good, be good, be good. It is a choice. experienced a Dripping in Black production.